Hello, and in this video we're going to have a look at my 1997 Saab 900 convertible. We're going to have a look around all its features, have a little play around with them, get the roof down and hopefully go for a little drive. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it whilst I do that. So let's get packing. So this is the cockpit of the Saab. We've got a full black leather interior. We've got a walnut trim dash. What luxury. You've got these wonderful air vents that move in countless different directions. They're very exciting. It's a four-speed automatic gearbox with a 2.3-litre normally aspirated non-turbo engine. So let's get to this car's true purpose and get this roof down. But before we can do that, we need to go back to the 1990s and the mobiliser technology. And this car has obviously an immobiliser and actually a factory alarm fitted. Now, I've opened this car a few minutes ago so we can have a look around it, which means that because I haven't started the engine in time before it times out, the immobiliser is kicked back on. So actually, what I need to now do is close the car, lock it, and unlock it again before I can start the engine. And the manual says that we should be starting the engine in order to get, get the roof down to save on the battery, which makes a lot of sense. So I've locked it, unlocked it, and now we should be able to start it. Not a nice noise, is it? That's the tonneau cover motor in the boot, which helps lift this tonneau cover up so that the roof can fold into it. Now, the motor, I learned, wears down and the uh, cogs don't engage fully sometimes, and so you get that horrible noise. There is a kit that you purchase to fix it. I've purchased the kit, I haven't yet fixed it. There is, however, a very ingenious, but short solution, and that is simply give it a little manual kick up. To do that yourself, you need to use your foot to operate the roof switch, which is not very elegant, but then neither am I. Right, let's go. There we go. I can carry on doing the rest by hand. That's the uh, view of what the car looks like with the roof down. Have a little wonder around it. A pretty car, isn't it? I think. It's aged really well. I think the hatchback uh, shape of the 900 from this generation hasn't. It looks a little bit 90s, but I think this is a bit out of the sun. I think this uh, cabriolet shape really does look classy, it's graceful, it's aged beautifully, and my goodness that colour, it's what sold it to me. Around the front, um, I've replaced the original Saab badge which had completely uh, worn away, as they often do on these cars. And we've got some uh, lovely cute little um, headlamp wipers. The left one works, the right one sadly doesn't. I bought a replacement and even that still doesn't work, so I'm going to have to keep investigating what that problem is. So around here in the back, let's have a look at the badges. It's a 900 SE. Um, SE means it gets the, um, the wood trim and the better Saab information system. Um, some people call it the goose because, well, look at it. It reads goose. Uh, and there's the little 2.3 badge to uh, give away the fact that it isn't the um, 2 litre non turbo or the 2 litre turbo, sadly. And there's the Saab badge.
So let's have a proper look at this interior now that we've got the roof down and plenty of light. We have beautiful walnut trim dash. I'm told it's real wood. I'm not entirely convinced, but there we are. Um, as I said, a black leather interior, which actually was quite cracked when I got it, and I dyed it back to uh, a more acceptable shade of black. So here's a close-up view of the uh, the dashboard. This is the uh, Saab information display, so it's currently showing me my distance to empty. Uh, that's my average fuel consumption, and that's the temperature. I think for a 1997 car, that is amazing that it still works, and amazing that it even had it. Um, certainly cars I've had uh, from the 1990s didn't have that, and this car was launched in 1994, so it really is quite advanced. Um, certainly a million times uh, posher than my uh, Volvo 240. Um, the radio uh, works really well. I'll put that on, it shows the CD1. There we go, shut up Mumford and Sons there for a moment. Um, and I can find radio. We have even a display showing the uh, radio station there, are my Chavi radio stations I'm listening to. Let, let's put, there we go, Radio 4. I promise it's programmed in, just, uh, just so you don't believe me. And this is the actual instrument cluster, and here you can see the fuel gauge is showing absolutely full. It isn't, it's probably just over half in reality, um, uh, and uh, it will, as I say, uh, pop down when it feels like it. Um, oh, and here's the sport button, look at that. Ta-da! Amazing, I love it. Uh, <laughs> um, and down here, We've got the uh, the lighting controls. We've got the front and rear fog lights and the main headlamps over here. And down here, just so you can see, here are the uh, heater control. Ah, we've got some blanking plates. I love blanking plates. Um, they should be for heated seats and a few other things that I can't remember. Um, this car sadly didn't have heated seats. I do love them, but uh, never mind. We don't have them. Uh, and down here, just put this into neutral so I can get at it properly. We've got the ashtray, which uh, needs a little helping hand to push out, but there we go. Uh, we've got the uh, cigarette lighter, which I've uh, replaced because there wasn't one in there. Um, I don't smoke, but I like completeness if I possibly can. And no cup holders in this car, which is uh, a bit of a shame considering the Saab cup holders are so pretty. Um, we've got an, an analog clock up here. Normally, uh, I think for the later 9.3s, you did have a cup holder which was underneath this panel, but uh, on the early 900s, like this one, you don't have them. One of my favourite features in this car is the rear lights. Um, here, they're on these uh, the pillars in the back here where the, uh, the seat belt comes out of, and they, they move by pressing them. They move around. They're really cool. I don't know why I like them, but I just think they're so cool. So, we're now, I've now got a coat on and we're now ready to go for our little drive. Now the first thing that we need to do is something I've just done earlier, which is to demobilize the car because I stupidly took the key out of the ignition, which has of course immobilized it. So lock and lock. Happy days, my little blinking red light has stopped. So let's start it up. Good. And I might actually put the windows up, the side windows, because I think that'll reduce a little bit of the noise which otherwise you would be hearing. Now, one little thing is that the passenger door window doesn't quite go all the way up until you open the door and then you close it, because I think the seal is a little bit too tight. So I'm just going to do that. Hold on a second. There, better. So, seatbelt on. According to the Saab information display, it's 13 degrees Celsius, which is quite surprising really, but there we are. Uh, into drive, lovely. Let's go. Right, we're now cruising at about 30 miles per hour. I haven't got sport mode on at the minute because uh, although I said earlier sport mode is very useful for most uh, driving outside the city, I think in town it's perfectly fine without it, we don't need to go that fast um, and it's built to be a lazy uh, cruiser more than a sports car. I don't know whether you can 
always see on the video, but actually the steering wheel vibrates quite a bit, and that's because this car suffers very badly from a scuttle shake. It's very, very shaky, I have to say. More shaky than I thought it would be. Um, I've read articles and uh, you know watched videos and reviews about this car from back in the day, and I didn't count myself as a particularly expert driver, and I thought I would never really be able to tell. But actually, I can, and actually, it's pretty awful, I have to say. The, uh, any surface that isn't perfect, the whole car shakes and vibrates, a bit like, as uh, Chris Pollitt on Twitter says, uh, being in a Tupperware box without the lid. And I think that's actually very accurate. Having said that the handling is fairly pants, the uh, wind noise is actually uh, very well damped. Uh, there, there really isn't very much, considering we've got the roof down. I'm not being buffeted at all. I think the story would be different for rear seat passengers, but for me, I'm absolutely fine. Note. It's so unnecessarily sporty. A couple of other faults that have uh, appeared with the car is the fuel gauge uh, is erratic, shall we say. It either reads completely full, completely empty, or the right level. It just depends on its mood. Um, and it changes during a journey, whenever it feels like it. Um, thankfully, the wonderful Saab information display, which is a trip computer, has got a distance to empty facility, and that works perfectly, it's very accurate as far as I can tell, so um, I'm not that concerned about the fuel gauge, although I will go and investigate to see what the problem with it might be. The only other major fault with the car that really actually does quite annoy me is the heated rear window. Now, these cars were uh, one of the first convertibles to be supplied with a glass rear window which means that it could have heating elements in it, which means that it could be heated, um, which is great. However, in this car, it doesn't work. Um, I have tried to have a look to see what I can find out, but I can't see any obvious problems, so I'm going to have to have another go one day. It is annoying because on a slightly wet, damp day, it does steam up because the convertible roof does slightly leak, it's slightly porous. Um, I have tried to protect it, but it's not perfect. Um, but anyway, it does steam up, and therefore in the glove box has come very handy to store a uh, roll of kitchen roll, because that can then be used to dry off the uh, otherwise misted up rear windscreen. So, um, more than one solution to a problem, I suppose. I can't show you one of my favourite features of this car, which is many people's favourite features of a Saab 900 for some reason, which is the black panel button, which is just here, um, which, when it's dark at night, it turns off all the lights uh, inside the cabin apart from the speedometer, um, which is completely pointless, but fun. And frankly, that describes this car uh, to a T. Um, I don't need it, I do have six other cars, but I fancied a change, I fancied something 90s, I fancied something that was a modern classic that I could actually use, and I think that's the key point. I love my 340s, I've got four of them, um, and I love how, how different they each are from each other, and we'll find that out in, in videos I'll make in the future, but I fancied a classic that I could actually use. So there you have it, this is uh, my Saab 900. Um, I like it for several reasons, it's yellow, it's a convertible, uh, it's an automatic, it's a 2.3 litre engine, which is lazy but powerful. Uh, there are some bad points, there are a few things that don't work on it, but hey, I like things that don't work on it because that allows me the chance to uh, play around and fix things. Hopefully, you'll join me again in the future for some more videos of all my other cars. And to whet your appetite, we've got some Volvo 343s, a Volvo 345, and a Volvo 245, Ooh, and a Volvo V40. Can't say I don't spoil you.